The only thing is, man, I've, okay, so I'm, I got mixed feelings here because the way that she, it's, it, I understand the need for revenge, but it's the way that she wants these suits she to die. She goes too far with it. That She definitely has that evil mastermind, like at least to the superheroes, like type yeah. of vibe for sure. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to want to kind of wipe them out mercifully, but uh, mercifully, but she wants to like, have, she wants them to die slowly. So she wants to release a disease. Yeah, she wants to release super COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, super. That, that's shit. That ain't COVID. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I don't know what kind of COVID you had. I don't know about that. Shit, that is not COVID right there. <laughs> December eighth. That's a Friday. Going to be in the Red Room show at ten p.m. So please get your tickets by going to BroadwayComedyClub.com or go to Double Toasted NY. Dot com and it should take you to this page right here where you can get your tickets now. All you West Coast people out there, how about you come see us in Los Angeles? Double Toasted Live in Los Angeles is going to be Saturday, April 27th for a night of comedy games and that after party. Uh, let me see here, y'all. Now, this is where I tell everybody that uh, if you have not seen all of Gen V, you might want to cut the show off. And I do not like telling people to cut the show off. I do not like telling audience members to go away. But I don't want to spoil anything for anybody because we're about to have a spoiler discussion for Gen V, the finale, the last episode yeah. of this season. Uh, it was eight episodes. Uh, episode eight just came on a few days ago, a couple days ago. Watched it and we took a uh, little survey today asking people, what would you like to see us talk about on the Sunday service? Which is one of the reasons why we were running late today. And a lot of people, a lot of people said, talk about Gen V. Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are a person who has not seen this, unless you're this guy, you have no choice but to stay here. <laughs> but you have a choice. And if you uh, don't want to watch, co completely understand. But don't say you weren't warned. So we're about to get into this now. Everybody good? Uh, if you keep going, that's on you. All right. And you're welcome. We're going to recount it so beautifully. You'll love it anyway. So yeah. Just don't touch that mouse. Hey, there you go. Sit your ass down. You'll, uh, <laughs> we're going to make it. We're gonna, you know what? We're going to make it even better. Hell yeah. The, the finale right here. Uh, all right. Well, for those who are here, I probably don't need to play this for you, but I'm just going to do it anyway to give everybody, again, a nice refresher here. Uh, talking about Gen V. And Gen V is the show that's a spinoff of The Boys. And... I have to say, so far, you know, uh, episode eight, the finale excluded. So far, I was very impressed with this show. Yeah, they did a good job. Uh, yeah, this this show deals with uh, a younger generation of soups, those are superheroes in this world. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anybody knows The Boys, it's about, uh, let's just start with that. The Boys is a, a show about superheroes, but more of a, like a science fiction type it's thing. It's a science fiction, like satire of what it would be like for if uh, big corporations had control of like Superman or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it would all be, it wouldn't be, saving the world would be the last priority. The first <laughs> yeah. priority is making money. Selling soda. Selling soda, making movies, social media presence. It's all about marketing. It's all about money. Uh, but it's a very violent, it's a very angry, it's a very cynical show, but it's a show that uh, satirizes superheroes very well. Uh, Gen Z deals, or Gen V, rather, Gen Z, <laughs> Gen, maybe Gen Z too. Gen V deals with the uh, uh, younger generation of soups, but this time they're going to college. And hopefully, you know, if they get their social media presence right, because it's not about going there and learning any kind of skills, or anything like oh, that. No. In the world. It's going to learn about how to be a celebrity. If you want to be in the seven, which is the big superheroes that we see in the boys, then you got to learn how to be a, a good celebrity presence. And that's what they go to this school for. But of course, being the world of the boys, uh, the school is completely dark. Golden boy. Digging for the truth is a rush. This is just a tiny bit, isn't it? Don't answer that. It's rhetorical. <laughs> you know, this this show, as you can see, uh, it's a school that's controlled by the Vought Corporation. And of course, if it's controlled by the Vought Corporation, then there's always something sinister happening. Yeah, something real shady going on there. Yeah, so uh, we don't have to get into details about everything. If you're watching this spoiler discussion, then you know everything about the show and what led up to uh, this, this finale episode, episode eight. Um, so looking at this, this is the one where everybody discovers that things are are not as they seem. 
You know, this is the one where, where where everybody discovers that uh these soups are being used, and let me go ahead and actually get some clips prepared here. These soups are not only being used for money and marketing uh uh for movies and products and whatnot. They're also being experimented on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought that God, you, would do anything wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Everything blew up in this episode, man. I mean, all all superhero hell bro uh, broke loose here. Yeah, a lot happens at the end of this. It's a lot a lot happened, and a lot of it is just, a lot of it is, uh, uh, again, it, like, like with the boys, a lot of it ends in violence. Very brutal violence. Lot, very disgustingly brutal violence going on right there, man, it's, in this episode here. Um, and looking at it, let me see here. Uh, so with this, I have to say that uh, I think that the, what makes the writing so good in this, because the, let me just say why well, I haven't watched the last episode. This series has been right up there with uh, the boys. Oh, yeah. It's it's real close for sure. Because you like all the characters and they're all interesting. Yeah, it's been right up there with the boys as far as quality of writing, as far as quality of, uh, you know, of, 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 of the characters that they have in it. Uh, it while also keeping the tone of the boys. But uh, I have to say, man, that I have really liked the mixed feelings of morality and sympathy yeah. In this last episode, uh, you know, it, I think that's what really shows how good the writing is in this. So at the school, and, here, and I'll start with this character. At the school, they have a dean, uh, Andrea Shetty. And, she, you know, she's been shady through the whole series, as we all know. Turns out the big reveal with her is that she wants to get revenge on Soups because yeah. of something that happened and the boys, something that they refer to. And it's actually a really, you can't blame her. It's a really dark moment in oh, the boys, yeah. it's man. It's one of my favorite scenes from the series. Oh man, as dark as it is and as f***ed up as it is, it's one of my favorite too. Um, favorites too is where the, that, the, if you remember the scene where the plane is going down and Homelander has been sent up there to help everybody. A classic superhero situation. Save the airplane, Superman. Exactly, except it's not Superman, it's Homelander. <laughs> yeah. So you know when he sends them up there, it's gonna be, yeah. <laughs> and he goes up there and uh, because of uh, they want to avoid a scandal because they can't save everybody. They got to let the plane go down. And they're like, well, there can be, there can be no survivors. Otherwise, we'll be exposed. And that means that children got to die, too. <laughs> and I love even before that, he's like, oh, what am I supposed to do? Just pick up the airplane? I'll fly right through it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. No, it's, and that's the, I mean, Jesus, this character, I hate him so much, but that's why. So good. That's why I love this. Uh, that's why I love this show. Uh, Anthony Starr. Yeah. I love, and we'll talk about Homelander a little bit because he plays a big part of this, uh, of this discussion. Um, as usual, Homelander doing terrible things. Uh, you can't blame this, this woman who discovers that Homelander is responsible for her son, I mean, I'm sorry, her husband and her daughter mm -hmm. being on that plane for dying. You know, and a lot of it has to do with the Vought Corporation. A lot of it has to do with uh, Homelander up there. She wants to see Soups die. The only thing is, man, I've, okay, so I'm, I got mixed feelings here because the way that she, it's, it, I understand the need for revenge, but it's the way that she wants these suits she to die. She goes too far with it. That she definitely has that evil mastermind, like at least to the superheroes, like type yeah. of vibe for sure. Yeah, you know, it's one thing to want to kind of wipe them out mercifully, but uh, mercifully, but she wants to like have. She wants them to die slowly, so she wants to release a disease. Yeah, she wants to release super COVID. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Super, that, that's shit. That ain't COVID. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of COVID you had. I don't know about that. Shit, that is not COVID right there. You know, if you get this disease, I mean, you break out and like pulse uh, blisters and you and your highs, insides, yeah. highs, your insides melt and you're, you're coughing up blood. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, man. Uh, you know, I don't want to. I, I, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but even I don't want to see that. Not every superhero is guilty. No, they're not. And she was locking up a lot of them that were innocent. Yeah, some of them just want to have sex with animals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is compared to what she wants to do. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad. It's, no, it's not all that bad. But um, so I felt so upset by the way she treated these soups that uh, we all know the scene where she slit her throat. Yeah. It was, you know, she was driven to do that by one of the uh, soups in here. Uh, I felt so bad for her that I hated her that I was happy to see her die, man. I was happy to see her slit her throat. Um, also, uh, 
I was even glad to see the uh, to see the the doctor that made the uh, the, the the disease. Yeah, he had a really interesting arc. Uh, and it's funny because I look at that doctor. Let's see if I can find the scene right here. Uh, so that doctor, I was even when I and I knew it was going to happen to him, and I kind of dreaded it. But uh, what's his name, Doctor Edison uh, Cardosa? He's the one that that invented the disease, and he didn't want to really do it. But even when he did, he's like, "Yeah, there's some good shit I made." <laughs> you know, he's like, "I don't want to really want to do this, but man, you know, if I have to." Not a not a bad piece of work that I've done right here, uh, but he runs into another character from The Boys, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Man. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. If you, and if you know the name, the name Victoria Newman, then you know what was going to happen to this guy. Ants. This school is a yeah. You know she, she yeah blew his head up, man. And I was like, "Hey, I'm happy to see him get it too." Uh, but even though he was doing the right thing. What was he? What, what was well, that? he was trying to just you know prevent her for because he was giving her the cure, right? Oh, that's right. He was trying to do the right thing, but it's like uh, it's too late, man. You, yeah. you, you, hey, you made the shit, so you got to suffer. Keep a close eye on her. Is this all of it? We'll make sure this stays out of the wrong hands. Oh. <laughs> it's just like whenever I see that character, I'm just like you know somebody's head's gonna start popping oh, yeah. off. The room is tense when you see her. For oh sure. yeah, yeah. I was like shit. You dead? You just don't know it, man. But. So I'm feeling bad the way that she treats these soups, man. I'm like, this is this is terrible, and I can't. I, I almost hate these characters for doing that to them. But then, let me see here. Get to this part here. But then these soups break out, because that's one of the things that happens here is that uh, our characters that we've been following, they've realized what the what the college has been doing. Yeah, what they're doing in the woods, as they call it. The woods, yeah, which is just a place where they take uh, these poor. Students haven't who, who who have powers who haven't done anything, uh, and they just experiment on them and yeah. like with horrible diseases. And I remember when they let them out, and I was like, "Oh well, cool. Now they you know now they get to get out and tell their story." <laughs> and now I, I, you know was I thinking? This yeah, is it's like, not with the uh, vault there, corrupt as they are. No, nah, these people have been these soups have been tortured and have been mistreated for so long that the first thing that happens when they bust out, they say, "Anybody who's not a super." We want revenge. Are you a soup? No, I'm an adjunct professor marketing. And I was like, oh, man, that's like <laughs> Jesus. And so these soups that I felt so sorry for. <laughs> they've little, been gone from society for so long. Yeah, they're, 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 they're feral animals now. You know, they don't. And I said, after, I felt so sorry for them before. And after that, I was like, oh, me Gotta go, man. <laughs> yeah, they, I've like I. I mean, I, there's a, just a little bit of sympathy, just a little bit, but no, y'all gotta go. Yeah, and I don't mean you, you gotta go. Like you gotta be stopped. You must be destroyed. Yeah. Once you see how out of control they are, it's like, all right, I guess there there needs to be some kind of line drawn in the sand. Even though I kind of like that guy when they introduced him. When he walked out there, his first line was like, "It's Gangnam Style, still a thing." And I heard that I was like, you know, kinda. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a funny line. Yeah. It was. Until he stopped melting people's faces. You know, it's like. <laughs> It's not fun anymore. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I say, no, I got to go, man. He also got me with the character of Kate because uh, all these uh, all these soups have been released by her. But before that happened, the last episode, uh, she was uh, talking to the dean. And uh, I didn't, you know, I thought the dean was going to have more control over her. The uh, the dean or who? which character? The, this character. Oh, okay, right, yeah. She was talking about, I'm going to release this disease and kill everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you... You're special. You know, you know, I love you. We'll protect and, you. Yeah, and she's been looking for, you know, I guess a mother figure in her life, and she's lost a daughter. Yeah, so, her, she wants to meet, uh, meet up with her sister. Yeah, so I thought, okay, so she's going to be able to be, she's going to be uh, uh, manipulated by her once again. Oh, yeah. And then, and then Kate is going to betray everybody that's been trying to, you know, sort all this stuff out and helped her out this whole time. And I, they, I thought that was a really good scene because they, they fooled me with that. And with all our time together, I... I feel like you are truly mine and I love you. You know, I thought that she had her, man. I thought that. Oh, this, yeah. That's a really strong emotional moment for oh, sure. Yeah. I didn't know she was going to convince her to slit her own throat. Like, oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then turn around and uh, lead this uh, murderous revolt of these wild soups on yeah. everybody. Um, How would you feel about that character, man? Uh, when she made this turn from being like this 
this sympathetic girl who needed love from somebody to being just this murderous super. What, the blonde this, woman? Yeah, Kate. Yeah, yeah. Man, I thought that she was one of the most complex characters because they kept going back and forth with her. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I really liked about this season, I think the theme, at least for me, the way I read it, it was anxiety. You know, like all of their powers mm -hmm. are kind of based around an anxiety like hers is like, what do people think about me? And I thought that they they did an excellent job, like really giving her a lot to work with and gave her a nice arc. And and who knows what the future of this character is, because they really, like I said, they go back and forth, like whether she is to be trusted or not. No, that is true, man. You know, what is the future of this character? Because uh, by the end of it, she ended up being like the sort of like the the, the main villain. Oh, yeah. Like she ended up being like, you know, the, uh, the, 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 I guess she would say the, she's the one that started just controlling everything at the end. She's the one that's leading the revolt. Oh yeah. She's going to come back looking like a pirate with prosthetic yeah. limbs. Man, I got to tell you that scene where they took her arm off, took me by surprise. Man. Yeah. Because that her power is to touch people. So it's like, oh, you took, you got rid of one of her appendages. Oh yeah. So when her arm got blown off, I was like. That I should have seen it coming. Yeah. But it's like, um, of course, that's what eventually had to happen. Yeah. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> Listen, there are times when I say that, damn, this show might be a little bit too violent. But it's moments like that. They always get me because when our arm blew off, you should have heard me. The whole house was like, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. this was last night I was watching this yeah, now, you, a couple nights ago yeah you think that something's gonna happen like she's gonna stop her cause she's basically like a bloodbender or something yeah but like she doesn't know how to use her powers that well and she overdoes it yeah yeah and it's funny because that comes after the scene where she seemed like she was a complete badass with those powers like she had complete control yeah like she's like reading into people's nervous system and stuff and like feeling their heartbeat or slowing their heartbeat down speeding it up well, like like this scene right here where she had to uh where she had to uh kill one of the one of the soups and she did it by making blood arrows with it. I was like, that's badass. That's like some so that's, badass. that's like some airbender shit going it, on. Oh, it's literally blood bending. I mean, moments like that. And this whole series in general, this Gen V, it really has this vibe of like, hey, CW. Yeah. Well, hold my beer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What's that character's name, by the way? Uh, which one? The one, the Bloodbender. Oh, blood, uh, Marie. Uh, Marie, Marie. Yeah. yeah. Blood, they said in the trailer, yeah, Bloody yeah. Marie. Yeah, yeah, but like it's Marie. That's her name. No, it seemed that I love that because it seems like she had so much uh, confidence and control over her powers. And then she because she didn't mean to do this to her. you know. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> and she's like, God damn, did I do that? <laughs> yeah. Like it almost seems like an accident, but she cares about the other character that's there. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was that was crazy, man. That's one again, one of the things I like about the violence is that always goes so over the top that it catches me off guard uh when they do something like that, man. You know, it's funny because every time I watch this show and they have mm -hmm. so much violence in it, I need some better help, man. Because you know, I am <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, you know, I'm traumatized. I'm, a, I'm just, you're like, I'm traumatized with these goddamn things. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> no, man, listen. <laughs> listen, man. Help me be better, please. <laughs> hey, listen. A lot of people probably watch the show like, man, it's so crazy. My mind is just not right after it's done. <laughs> but hey, I want to uh, take a moment to uh, give a word to our sponsor right here, BetterHelp. And BetterHelp. It's cool because if you know anything about BetterHelp, probably from me, you know that it's online therapy. And the thing that's cool about online therapy is that it is very convenient. And this is a time that you probably want it. You know, the holidays are right around the corner. A lot of people get the holiday blues, man. Holiday or what do they call it? It's like uh, with where the weather affects people, like where it just it gets dark earlier. Yeah, yeah. Time is changing. Yeah. You know, seasonal depression. There you go. Seasonal. Dep that's it, man. Yeah. Seasonal stress, seasonal depression. Hey, listen, holidays are coming. Thanksgiving. You know, these these relatives are going to be getting on your nerves. Talking uh, about everything that you asked not to talk about exactly, at the table. Exactly. Exactly. Christmas is coming. There's a stress on that. And, you know, some people get depressed around that time. You know, if, you, if you're one of those people, then, hey, online therapy might be something that you want to check out. And listen, don't even have to go that deep. Sometimes you just need to organize your mind. 
so that you can reach certain goals that you've been trying to reach. Maybe you can't sleep at night because your mind is always racing. You know, just clean your house a little bit up there. I say it's as simple as that. It doesn't have to be too deep, although they are there. What you laughing about? Doing a little mental housekeeping. Doing a little I like mental that. housekeeping, man. You know, it's, it's, it's Get a nothing. room for your brain. Or go in there and work your brain out like at the gym or something, just like you do with your muscles on your body. Uh, online therapy is very convenient for that. Why? Because for one thing, people like to have their therapy in, a, in different ways. Some people like to talk to somebody face to face, eye to eye. Some people don't like looking at people. Eye, <laughs> you know, some people might just want to call. You know, you can have video calls or you can have uh, voice calls with online therapy. Again, it's uh, very convenient. So it's at your time whenever you want it. And also they give you a therapist that you don't like. Then you know what? Go in there and tell them it's just not working out and they'll trade somebody out that does work for you. Uh, no questions asked. Very simple to do. And also, it's affordable to do that with uh, better help. So, as I said, man, you know, a lot of people have the stigma against mental health and uh, seeking therapy and all that kind of stuff. They don't do it. Uh, not only has is that not true, not only should you actually talk to somebody every now and then, again, even if it's just to like clear your mind. You know, maybe nothing deep is going on with you, but just organize things up there a little bit. But uh, also, it's very easy to do now. And it's gotten a little bit easier with what I'm about to give you right here. I'm about to give you this code, betterhelp.com slash double toasted. You put that in and you'll get 10% off your first month of better help. So please use that. There's nothing wrong with getting therapy. And it's a lot easier, easier than ever to do it. Thanks to people like BetterHelp.com. I want to thank BetterHelp.com for coming in and supporting this portion of the show. And I want to thank all of you out there for your support. Uh, let's go ahead and get into... All those characters in Gen V could use better help. <laughs> yeah, all of them. All of them. <laughs> Especially, what is his name? Sam? What's that his name? The one who was locked up in the woods? Oh, that man, that character of Sam. I, I love that because it's a portrayal of someone on the spectrum with superpowers, you know, which you don't really think about being scary. But it's like someone like that throwing a tantrum. It's like that's that's dangerous. No, the character of Sam here, man, who's who's just, you know, just looking to belong uh, and has all this anger inside of him. Let me, let me see here. Yeah, I. I uh, that character is uh, is is very frightening. Uh, because you're right. He's like, he, what'd you say? He's kind of on the spectrum. Yeah. I mean, someone was telling me that he was schizophrenic. I, I saw him more as just someone very far on the spectrum, the way that he throws tantrums and like, you know, it's like looking like he's hitting himself and stuff. Yeah. He does. I mean, he's learning, you know, like how to, he's somebody that isn't like almost, he's almost like a psychopath. Like he has no real understanding. No social of, skills. No social skills. No understanding of emotions. Yeah. And, I, and what's, What's uh, what I, what I really like about that character is that this character of Cricket thinks that she can control him. You know, she treats him like a puppy. Yeah, it's kind of like the relationship of uh, Black Widow and the Hulk. Yeah, or some, or she's one of those chicks who's like, I can save him. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I hate to be like that. But she's like, oh, you know, he likes me. I can save him. I can change him. I thought they were cute the way that they wrote them together. I thought it felt natural. It didn't feel forced. That's for sure. No, it no it it no it felt good until he started like. Tearing people apart, you know, <laughs> thinking they were puppets and everything. But uh, yeah, there's a point in the, in the show too, and I don't have the clip or anything. But I thought it was a good point because the, the, this character, uh, again, very disturbed uh, for good reason. I mean, he was experimented on. Yeah, and that's the sad thing about it. I get it. He was experimented on. Uh, he was mistreated. Lied uh, to. Yeah, his brother died, so he doesn't have anybody to actually guide him. Uh, he feels alone, but. Some something tells me this, this character needs to be killed. Like he can't <laughs> listen. This character can't continue to exist. That you know, with these powers that he has, and also be this full of rage, and also not being able to have these social skills that you say he lacks. Yeah, I think you're right, but they do a good job of making you think. You know, maybe, maybe there's a chance. Well, he makes a good point in the show where he tells Cricket, he's like, you know, there's something wrong with me. He said, you, you, you know, you, you, you think you're helping me. But, you, you know, you just all you do is just uh, carry me around, hide me, you know, tell me I can do this. Or, I, or tell me I can't do this. Tell me I can't do that. Uh, she re you know whether she realizes or not, she is she's doing her best to help him. Mm -hmm. But she really is treating this like uh, almost like, a, 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 you know, this like, like a high school girl who's just like has this boyfriend that she's, you know, uh, that she's Keeps in love. Secluded. With. Yeah, that she's infatuated with, you know, and, and again, 
maybe maybe you know not I can't really compare it to an abusive relationship, but he's not a good person. Yeah. And she's but she figures it out hard like, oh, but he loves me, and you know what? Through love, we'll change everything for the better. He'll be all right. And that and character we, cannot he cannot be changed. And and we ha- we see why she appreciates him because she she likes the way that he talks to her because we see what she goes through and she's she's tired of it. Somebody put it well in the chat. They say he's like a pit bull. A dangerous ass pit bull. Yeah. With superpowers. <laughs> yeah, man. On the spectrum. Crazy dog. Yeah, a, a pit bull on the spectrum. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about that ending, though, man. Yeah, because a lot happens, like, really quick. Like, one thing after another. We get the cameo that we have all been waiting for. Oh, shit. Hold on. Let me turn the sound on this. Breaking yeah, the this, speed of sound. This is the... <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Uh, this is the cameo that everybody was waiting on and because they were saying, you know, this, this is connected to the boys. Will this character show up? Now, in any other show, or any other movie, a character coming in like that we would have been like, we would have been cheering. We would have been like, oh, hell yeah, here we go. But now, when, but it's Homelander. Yeah, it's and, like, oh, this problem is about to get worse. Yeah, <laughs> being as Homelander, like, you know, this is, yeah, this is, this, this is not good. Yeah. This is not, this, however this is going to work out, it's not going to be good for the people that we're rooting for. Sir, I am. Um... Now, there's two things that are happening right here. Two Homelander trademarks, and both of them scare the shit out of me. Uh, that look. First of all, when Homelander says nothing. Yep. When he comes in, and especially when he speaks with his hands, I'm like, <laughs> uh, please, no more yeah. finger talk. <laughs> I mean, anytime somebody does this to you, that's not good. But what is Homelander is like, uh, so when he's quiet, that's terrifying. But then he does this other thing. What kind of animal? He's smiling. You know, whenever Homelander smiles, that's it. You're f- man. If Homelander, that, uh, that's that's one character I say, I never want to see that character happy. Because oh, yeah. if he smiles, then something bad is about to happen. And I was, what man, this is one of the things with, uh, again, this show being so violent, is that whenever something bad is about to go down, you anticipate it. Because you know that it's going to be really bad. Yeah. I mean, he barely says anything. And somehow he manages to be incredibly racist and scary. Anthony Starr, who plays his character, is amazing as uh, as Homelander. It, it is one of my favorite performances on TV. I think that he knocks it out of the park every time he oh, shows yeah. up. Do you like attacking your own kind? Stay back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, see, if I was there, I would have been like, run, bitch. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, you know, uh, that cameo was great. Oh, yeah. You know, and it was what, what was so great about it is that it was more than a cameo. It was uh, it was everything we love about Homelander and it lent itself to the story. Oh, yeah. And it did, it did, what it did was a great job of connecting this show to the boys. Yeah. And it was a big moment already where the characters were having the arcs. I mean, uh, the main villain, the blonde girl, she was going through her character transformation right there. Like yeah. her eyes are turning red. Yeah. Her arm yeah. is missing. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way he's sending uh, Homelander, not to save the day, but as quality control for the, <laughs> for the corporation, man. And in typical boys fashion, man, you know, uh, everything ends up being in the corporation's best interest as they do a... Uh, Big corporate cover-up. Four Gudolkin students went on a brutal murder spree. At least 12 people are now dead. Proving once again that all Americans are safer with heroes like Sam and Kate protecting us, our values, and our way of life. And like, yeah. He read what I wrote. Good oh, job. Yeah. <laughs> all the day's work. <laughs> oh, Homelander saves the day again. <sighs> now to go home and get some milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, it, and I think it ended great with you wondering you know, because so many questions. Yeah, these characters end up in a room. It's like, what's going to happen with them? Where the f- are they? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it was. A, a, I thought, man. Okay, I'm just going to say this. This show surprised me, and I said I'm already impressed with this show. So uh, the writing on this is very good, and it just goes to show that they did not do this because uh, my biggest fear was that with the success of the boys, 
they were just going to spin this off just to keep the property going. Yeah, it just pumps up now. Yeah, yeah. You know, do what corporations do, you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, no, they actually had, they had an idea. They had a genuine idea on how to keep this going and spin it off. And I thought they did a great job with it. Um, and, these, you know, this world is, uh, I love to see it develop more. Uh, these characters are holding their own. These actors are great. Um, and yeah, this this series is right up there with the boys. But most of all, I said, you know, when this is done, it's really going to depend on how they do this finale right here. Oh, yeah. And this finale I thought was great, man. Yeah, they more or less stuck the landing. I think I enjoyed the ride more than I did the way that it ended. But mm -hmm. it wasn't bad. That's for damn sure. Excellent job of what they did. It's great TV. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. No, I had a great job with it.